you know, because it's going to be coming. And all of this is great information. How are you doing, Michelle? I'm doing good, doing good. I'm excited about today's show. Yes, yes. Hey, Chuck, can you hear me? Yes, yeah. I can, but I, I'm... So, uh, uh, they haven't passed to the end yet, so uh, yeah, no, right now you just got to listen to uh, uh, Chuck and myself. Uh, but uh, I tell you, it's coming uh, real soon. And uh, I, I tell you, if uh, you want to ask this great man some a question, remember one 1-888-344-1170. Again, that's one 1170 You know, so uh, call in, ask questions because this this guy is is, is a uh, is expert in making sure that putting people back to work and and as a career coach. On, if you're already working to find your ideal job. So uh, sit back. It's going to be coming your way in two minutes. Two minutes. Am I supposed to be listening? Do a test, Michelle. You, you're fine, Bill. Uh, you're, I, you're okay. I return I mean, okay. He's, uh, he's just talking to okay. some of this yeah. Facebook Live crowd. No, it said that was perfect. So I just keep okay. my phone on the ear. Yeah, keep listening to your phone. So how you doing today, Noah? Man, doing just fine, man. Uh, kind of got a little headache today, but uh, yeah. <laughs> but uh, we got a great show uh, for our listening audience. And uh, this guy is an expert in, in the field, uh, connecting and coaching and making sure that uh, uh, that uh, his clients uh, get the best opportunity uh, to better their employment or get employment. Thirty seconds out. Okay. Okay. It's wrong. You trying to oh, turn <laughs> Hello, welcome to It's Your Life. I'm James Cooley, and like I always say, wow, we got a fantastic show coming your way. You know, all week we've been talking about getting America back to work. Or we also been talking about if you already got a job, how you can go about getting a better job. And today is part four of this week's series. And I got a fantastic guy that's been in the business, I'll tell you, over 30 plus years and just an expert at career coaching. And so, you know, he's so good. I, I, I titled this show, How a Career Coach Can Shine a light on your future, you know, and this guy is going to, he's going to shine a light on all of our future. If we just listen to him, pay attention, take notes and um, call, call in. If you got questions, I, I encourage everybody to call in at 1-888-344-1170. Again, that's 1-888-344-1170. His name is Bill Elmire, and I tell you, I, um, you went for a treat. Pay attention again. Uh, whatever you're looking for, any type of questions that you have uh, uh, about employment, about career coaching, about just 
anything to dealing with employment and how you can become a better person and a better employee, you know, just call in. And, you know, today, I, as as always, I got my co-host here, Michelle Cooley. How you doing, Michelle? I'm good. I'm good. Happy Thursday. It is happy Thursday. And I got the, the show contributor, Chuck Cronone. How you doing, Chuck? Doing great, JC and Michelle. It's a pleasure to be here again. Thank you. Absolutely. And then uh, I, I, I got to have my guests just say hello to you. How you doing, Bill? How you doing today? Well, I just hope I can live up to that unbelievable, uh, you know, uh, <laughs> opening there. To, you know, the, so uh, thank you for the uh, for the kudos and the uh, fantastic introduction. I'll just try to live up to that. Well, well hey, Bill, uh, uh, that I haven't did intro yet. <laughs> the intro is going to be coming later on down the line. You know, so... Uh, but uh, I tell you, um, we always talk about a little bit about uh, what, what we've been doing the last couple of days or something like that. You know, M Michelle and I, we are stuck in the, this deep space nine. I mean, I mean, so uh, I think uh, we, we watch at least two episodes a, a night. Uh, Michelle, you want to tell them a little bit about the last episode we watched? Oh my gosh. Now, I'm an original Star Trek fan with Captain Kirk, but these <laughs> 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 all these different series i just started getting onto it you know the deep space nine they have all these different you know people from different planets they have um odo who's like a changeling he he, he morphs into different things like you see a hammer on the desk and there it comes or um, odo as a real life person so it's, it's a really interesting series if you're into sci-fi if you love star trek I'm just recommending to our listening audience, go watch it. It's on Netflix. It's on the regular TV, Deep Space Nine. Hey, no, no, uh, listen, or that's my producer, my great producer. I did not know he was a tracker. <laughs> oh. <laughs> hey, for some reason, I knew you were going to say that. Okay, war is. <laughs> yeah. Chuck, how are you doing today, my friend? I'm just taking this all in. I'm, I'm just waiting for the next thing. We're going to have a, 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 a Star Trek or a Deep Space Nine character on the show soon. I just waiting uh, for one. <laughs> and, and we might, we might. I uh, mean, uh, you never know. <laughs> you know so well, you if never I know. Say a word. I go way back before all that. I used to be the manager of employment at Fox, and we were making this little movie. They said, this is going to be a bomb or a really big hit. It was Star Wars. <laughs> oh, well, well, well wow. I tell you what, we're going we to talk about that one real soon, Bill. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. But, uh, but today, I, I want to get down to uh, um, our, our topic, how a career coach can shine a light on you. And uh, just, uh, audience, listen, audience, just like I told you, Bill is the best in the business. And so uh, we're going to dive directly into this. Uh, Chuck, uh, can you tell our listening audience what the purpose of the show today is? Sure, be, be pleased to do the uh, purpose of tonight's show is understanding the importance of a career coach and how beneficial they can be to your career. Getting to your employment goals faster. Have you considered a portfolio career? And learning the keys to a successful job search and how to use artificial intelligence. So JC, that's, we're going to look, listen to Bill for all this advice and expertise in those areas. You know, uh, uh, my thoughts are that, uh, you know, technology is changing all the time. And uh, just like I would say that uh, you mentioned uh, AI, artificial intelligence, all of those things are important. It's also important that we educate ourselves and keep and stay abreast upon change in technology and education. So, Bill, I'm looking forward to, to this. Michelle, can you introduce our guest, please? Yes, probably I will. Bill Ellermeyer, William K. Ellermeyer, former human resource executive, experienced entrepreneur, global speaker, and career coach. Bill pioneered the executive outplacement business in Orange County, California, initially as career management services in the 1980s. Bill has been a creator and innovator in the field of career management, having pioneered the win-win concept of networking the portfolio career and free agency approach to job security. Bill is particularly known as a speaker and entrepreneur and regularly speaks on career management, entrepreneurship, and unretirement. In addition to having pioneered the outplacement business, 
Bill created or helped to create the Association of Professional Consultants, the Global Network, and the Senior Executive Forum. Bill continues to be an active speaker, coach, mentor, and business innovator. Prior to his work in the outplacement industry, Bill worked as a human resource executive, holding several positions, including vice president, human resources for Air Cal, which was ultimately acquired by American Airlines. Previous HR positions were held at Lowe Snyder Corp, Republic Corporation, and Hunt Western Foods. Bill spent three years on active duty as a Naval officer, having left the Naval Reserve with the rank of Lieutenant Commander. Bill received his BA in Business Administration from Consentia College in Elsa, Illinois. The James Cooley Show, It's Your Life, proudly presents Bill Ellermeyer. Welcome to the show, Bill. Welcome to the show. Hi. How you doing today, my friend? Good to be here, man. I'm ready to rock and roll. Oh, well, we, we, it's, it's, it's time. Hey, Bill, can you tell <laughs> our listeners all this a little bit about your background and where you grew up? I know Michelle mentioned a lot, but I, I know it's a lot more, too. Oh, yeah. Well, that was maybe more. I appreciate that. But uh, I grew up in the Bay Area, up in Northern California. You know, so I'm an old, uh, you know, Raiders and 49er fan uh, from a little kid. And, um, you know, went to, uh, you know, through high school up in that area. So I know the Bay Area well. But most of my uh, working career has been down here in Southern California. Uh, went out of school, like many people, I didn't know what uh, what to do. So I went in the Navy and came out uh, as an ensign and eventually made my way up to Lieutenant Commander. And then I, when I got into the corporate world through friends, I started in HR and eventually went up to that uh, vice president role. But then after uh, I got, they sold to America and I got dumped and that's when I started being a career coach. So. Uh, I'm appreciative of the opportunity to come and maybe help a few people with some ideas and and uh, any way we can answer their questions. Hey, Bill, how did your education background prepare you for the business that you're in today? I don't think it really did. You know, I mean, getting a, a degree is just a, a, a certificate that says you jumped over that hurdle and we all need that. But, you know, in terms of the helping me in terms of my career, no, it was the hard knocks of get, getting uh, dumped a couple of times in my career and learning uh, the pain of losing a job. And, um, you know, I had uh, uh, several occasions, uh, you know, when uh, they sold uh, the, the, my company, Air Cal, to American Airlines, um, you know, I, I wasn't expecting it and I got dumped. And so that was the first time I'd really been out of work for any period of time. And that's when I invented what became the executive outplacement business and eventually sold to uh, Lee Hectares and Adeco, a big company. And and I went out on my own and been doing that for the last uh, 25, 30 years. Well, you, you mentioned the Navy. Uh, I spent 23 years in the Navy. Can you tell us a, a little bit about your, 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 your Navy uh, service? Yeah, I, mean, I was you mentioned based out of Lemoore Naval Air Station. I was an air intelligence officer attached to a fighter squadron. Uh, we'd go out on the, uh, a carrier, um, you know, one, once a year or every other year. And, um, you know, so I got to um, visit uh, the Philippines and Ch Ch Hong Kong and Japan and learned about the rest of the world. And a lot of those, uh, a lot of things I learned about the world and people came as a result of my, my naval experience. So I had a great time in the Navy and, and I'm about very much um, a part of um, what I am today, uh, got formed there as a naval officer. Hey, thank you for your service. Thank you for your service. Uh, you know, yes, uh, I spent uh, uh, a lot of time overseas over in Asia, Japan, just like you know, Philippines. And so, uh, man, I, I kind of miss it, but uh, I'm glad to be home, <laughs> you know, I'm back the in the way. States. Same deal. You know, you know we're going to take a station break, but we're going to come back and continue our conversation with Bill uh, Elamire. It's your life. I'm James Cooley. Put the phone down. Hey, Michelle, uh, you asked the first two questions right off the bat. Uh, after I introduced, uh, come back in. You want four and five? You want to do four and five? Yes. Oh, yeah, I have. Mm -hmm. And then Chuck is going to do six. Yeah. Okay, so.
You okay? You right? Country Boy, City Boy, a journey that ain't over yet. A true life coming of age story by James J. Okay. Cooley. Just doing the music, doing the break, it, it, it's okay to take it, but put it back on before, uh, so uh, we can do that. So, uh, yeah, I asked Chuck if he's okay. He said he's slipping water, causing a cough. Uh, yeah. So, so you ask uh, those two. Mm -hmm. You set it up, and then I ask. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. All right. Welcome back to It's Your Life. I'm James Cooley and Noah. I told you, we're we getting ready to bring it, Noah. We're getting ready to bring it. <laughs> oh, absolutely. I, I hope we Observer. get an opportunity to, <laughs> to get there. You know, so, uh, hey, listen, audience, uh, if you want to join in on the conversation, 1 888 344 1170. Again, that's 1 888 344 1170. Bill, can you tell us about Ellermeyer Connect? Yeah, sure. Um, you know, as I say, uh, when I was at Air Cal, when they got sold to American, I got dumped and, uh, had, and didn't have a clue. Uh, what I would do, but I did know a lot about the employment business, having been in the HR business. And so uh, long story short, I started what became the executive outplacement business, which means career counseling for individuals who are just let go by corporations. Say there's a merger, you've got two of everything. They would hire me to work with the individual that got let go, or I would work with people that uh, didn't fit uh, the, 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 the role uh, so that's how it started, and, and I built it up for 10 years in three cities and then sold to a big uh, corporate uh, job, uh, ADECO, Lee Hack Terrison, and uh, for spent uh, the next 10 years with, with that business, and then went out on my own in 2005 and have been an independent career coach uh, ever since. I also help uh, early stage companies find angel money to get started sometimes, and I also find business for professional service providers. So, but 75% but of my work is with people in transition, either out of work or in a job that they're unhappy in. And the average age of my clients is probably 53. So from 40 to 75. Wow, that's really impressive. Uh, well, how and when did you decide to become a career coach? Uh, when I got dumped. <laughs> you know, <laughs> you know, it, it came about pretty, pretty quickly. At first, I was, you know, shocked and, and, and uh, you know, sad and, you know, angry and frustrated. And, and then I started thinking about what I knew. I knew more about the employment business and particularly headhunters. I didn't want to be a headhunter because although they make a lot of money, they're, they're confined to an office and a phone. And I wanted to ramble around and um, network and build relationships. And that's how I started what became the executive outplacement business here in, in Orange County and really Southern California. So uh, I've been a career coach now for 35 plus years, uh, working with people either out of work or employed, but unhappy. The Gallup poll, the Gallup poll says 70% of the professional workforce, some level of unhappiness, but 30% of they, those people are very unhappy. That's my target market but there's no database of those people. So it's tough to find those people in like COVID because there's no networking uh, to go out and interact with people now. Bill, um, for people who don't, aren't familiar with the career coach, what's the, what are the pros and cons of being a career coach? Well, the pros is uh, I, I love it. I get to help pe change people's lives and uh, you know get them back on track and maybe things that they hadn't considered. The cons is uh, you don't make a lot of money, <laughs> but uh, you know, bottom line is 
Um, when somebody's out of work, uh, and I work with people that are either unemployed or employed and unhappy, you know, by the time they reach me, they're, they've are they been out of work a while. Well, they don't like to spend money because, you know, they haven't been earning. So, you know, you're, you're meeting people at a time when they don't have a lot. So although I don't make a lot, I do other things to try to make a living, and I love what I do. Thanks, Bill. You know, hey, hey Bill, uh, so uh, what are the keys to getting to starting a business? Well, the keys is to, to identify uh, what my client is passionate about. And you go back through their life. A lot of times, well-meaning parents or teachers cover up their passion, say, oh, no, you need to be a lawyer or you need to do this or that. They may or may not be cut out for that. So sometimes people don't even think about, they might do what they're doing well, but they're really not happy. Now they're 50 years old or 55 and they're saying, hey, do I want to do this for another 30 years? No. So I, I'm really big on assessment, you know, really evaluating a person's history and more particularly evaluating their accomplishments and looking for their inherent skills in those accomplishments. Then take those skills along with their experience and their values. And this is very important because a lot of people skip this step and then figure out my client and I, what's the primary objective we're going after. Maybe it's a corporate job. Maybe it's start a business. Maybe it's do a variety of things, you know, and then secondly, get them connected. Because when you're out of work, the one thing you need is connections. The, the phone ain't ringing because you don't know enough people. So getting people connected so they're in the, in the mix. Because we're all entrepreneurs at heart. I mean, in the early years, you deploy yourself in a corporate job. But eventually, um, those jobs all have a beginning, but they have an ending. So you get used to being in and out of work. I try to get people off that track when they get up into their late 40s or into their 50s. Yeah, so uh, you mentioned uh, 45 to 60 uh, uh, clientele. How, how do uh, uh, the client get in touch with you? Uh, I mean, if the, I know we got some folks on the line that want to know that, uh, hey, uh, you can reach me right here uh, if you want to talk about certain things. How, do, yeah, how would well, they get in I mean, touch with you? Obviously, if they Google my name, they'll get uh, my website and a lot of things. But I'm, I'm old fashioned. I do use the phone so they can just text me or call me. And I'll return the call, 714-803-9805. That's 714-803-9805. Whether they want to use me or not, I'll have some ideas and some connections for them. So the, I'll always make that call worthwhile, whether they become clients or not. And uh, I'm always looking for helping people that are in transition or having a hard time, even though they're not clients. Bill, what is a portfolio career and why do you feel it is so important? Um, can, can you get into details regarding this? Oh, yeah. A portfolio career means using your core skills over multiple streams of income. Why? Because we're now in the gig economy. All jobs have, uh, they've gotten the tenure of a job has gotten shorter and shorter in the United States. So the average uh, corporate job today is one to three years. So that means you're always going to be looking for work. Well, when you get up to being in your 50s, you can't always get a job that quickly and they don't last. So you need alternatives. Portfolio career means doing the figuring out what, what you love, what your, what your skills are, and then how to apply them to a core business. Then the portfolio is what are the add-ons? So maybe your core business is consulting in engineering or maybe accounting or you're a fractional CFO or a controller. But then what could you add on? Maybe board work, maybe teaching, maybe writing. I have two pages of, of things that people have done in addition to their core business, their platform business, like importing suits from one of my clients from his brother in Italy, like playing the classical violin in an orchestra one night a week. I have two pages of these things that I call ads on. You have to be in today's world doing more than one thing. You, we can't just exist on one thing because everything comes to an end unless you're an entrepreneur and building something. And even that is changing all of the time. Bill, you know, I'm a New Yorker, born and raised in New York City, and I am so familiar with our former mayor, um, Ed Koch. He was quite uh, a force to be reckoned with in politics and even well, on the entertainment side as well. You mentioned um, that the portfolio career of Ed Koch caught your attention. Can you explain that statement? Yeah, he didn't accept retirement. I mean, he went on to do, oh gosh, I wish I had a list of all the things he'd done, speaking, writing, 
promoting, selling. I mean, he had a, a vibrant uh, career after his uh, work as mayor and uh, he followed my message and never used the R word, which stands for retirement. Uh, retire retirement in its old school way is a very obsolete idea because retirement means you, you literally atrophy because it starts up upstairs with the brain. If you're not using your brain, your body will, will follow. So I always uh, make sure that my clients don't even use the R word. And I brought a number of people back out of retirement into a portfolio career. And again, the portfolio career is take finding your core base and then adding these other things in. So it's using your core skills over several activities. And in today's world, I always teach people, you can't just do one thing. You have your base, but even if it's uh, a volunteer, <coughs> excuse me, a job, we, we have to be doing, we have to be out on the track. We're in the hustle economy, I call it. And the gig economy, 20% of the workforce now, the professional workforce is in the gig economy, doing something other than a traditional corporate job. Bill, for those going for that traditional job or going out there to get a job, can you tell them the keys to a successful job search? Yeah, well, there are a number of keys. The first is know thyself meaning the assessment. What are, what are you really, all, what is right for you? Don't just write a resume and go out looking for another job similar to what you have. Get, identify the things early in life that you were passionate about and see if you can connect that way. So the first order of business is get down what you're looking for. Because a lot of people kind of skip that step and then they, they, they have to later in life figure it out again. So the first order of business is to, to understand what you're going after and get that message clean and clear. The second work, all the books that are out there, it's about building a network and that's a lifelong activity. Your network is your net worth and you need to be building your, your, your network continually throughout your life and career, not just when you're in job search. So networking and knowing what you're going after are the two most important things. Obviously interviewing, resume, all of that kind of stuff comes in, but those are the two keys that are most important. Thanks, Bill. Hey, Bill, you mentioned and uh, looking at the uh, the un unemployment, I mean, on retirement. Can you right. can you explain that a little bit more? <laughs> well, I, <laughs> I'm a good example of that, you know, because I've uh, I've uh, gone on to uh, do uh, more in my quote retirement years than most people do in their regular career, and so I've done more diverse, had more diversity and more excitement. You know, after 65, and I'm way over that, as you know, um, you know, so I've been around working on uh, another 20 years of that. And I follow all the guys that are in front of me, like Warren Buffett or all the, the names of famous people that are working up into the 90s. Work, life and health go together. So if you stop working, you're li not living. I, I can tell you that it's a lifelong activity and work and health go together. I love it. I mean, I mean, that's I love how you put that. But I, I didn't think you was uh, in uh, a year over sixty five. You know, yeah. So. Well, I mean, eighty four next month. So uh, that, that's um, that's uh, that's what keeps me uh, young and vibrant. I have a lot of friends in my network that are millennials, and I have uh, people up into their ten years ahead of me. So um, that's the way I live. Well, you know, I tell you, whatever you're doing, continue to do it. You know, we got to take a station break. Well, we're going to come back and finish our discussion with Bill. It's Show Life. I'm James Cooley. Yes. Okay. okay. What about now? Yeah, you, you, you was right. Can you hear me now? Yeah. I had pulled the mic back and I, and I apologize. Okay. Okay.
Welcome back to Your Life. I'm James Cooley. And while I tell you, Bill is uh, uh, teaching all of us something. And um, I mean, I, I just uh, uh, love the fact that, uh, you know, we are having a conversation with the older uh, working community or people that uh, um, might be looking for jobs. So, hey, Bill, when and why should a person consider moving on to the entrepreneur track? Uh, generally speaking, uh, you know, that's, you want to start thinking about that when you're in your mid 40s to to early 50s, because again, corporate jobs are hard to find. So uh, eventually you need to find a way to get off that corporate track. You can't be in and out of jobs uh, when you're in your 50s, 60s, 70s and up. So at some point, everybody has to find their way to make a living outside of a corporate job. And there are a whole lot of reasons for that. And we'll probably talk in a little bit about um, you know, why, how jobs are disappearing because of artificial intelligence. So all jobs are, are in jeopardy, at least part of them. I was talking to an attorney yesterday and he said 75% of what I do now is going to be done in the next few years by machine. And that's happening across the board in a lot of professional jobs. So algorithms are eating jobs, if you will. Um, you know, um, the skilled labor, Plumbers and electricians, no, no way. No, no al algorithm is going to go out to your house and change the water heater. So uh, <laughs> the fact is they, they're more um, immune from this thing. But there are a number of books on what's going on there uh, with, with artificial intelligence. And, and I've got several of them. One of them here, uh, I'll just hold up the screen. It's called Super, Super AI Superpowers. Um, how China and Silicon Valley are uh, creating the new world order. And, and I'll show you uh, what that looks like. And uh, essentially, it's a, uh, it's a look into artificial intelligence and how we're competing with China. And in some areas, areas of that, they're way ahead of us. But paying attention to uh, what's going on with AI is a big part of uh, the future. And when I say the future, it's now. It's the next couple of years. So it's, it's already happening. It's just not in the news every day. Hey, so Bill, you, you mentioned uh, uh, a person should start, I guess, preparing for uh, a transition uh, right around 40 or, or somewhere around that because they can't depend on corporate. Can you explain that a little bit more to our listening audience that might have didn't catch that one? Yeah, again, going back to what I said earlier, jobs all have a beginning, but they also have an ending. Now, when you're, when you're younger, let's say under 50, you know, it's easier to get a job. But since the average job in America is, is about one to three years, once you get up to that age bracket, it it's, it's gets harder and harder. And so you need to figure a way to get off the track. The reason for that is to, to, to deal with the fact that if you are 60, I tell people, if you're 60, you've got another 25 years of work uh, and life uh, work and the work life in front of you if you take care of yourself and people more and more are learning to do that and with the advent of all the technology and medicine people are going to be living and working well into their 90s if they know how to take care of themselves. Bill, you know you mentioned artificial intelligence you know with the growing utilization of AI how do you foresee the future of jobs can you kind of go into <laughs> detail regarding that? <laughs> well <laughs> Hey, they're going away, you know, so you got to be prepared uh, because eventually, you know, if you read the future, I mean, maybe 15, 20, 25 years, uh, the great majority of the work we do today will be gone. And someday way out might be 40, 50 years, you know, they, we won't have jobs as the basis of human life. And that's when you, that's why already politicians going way back to Richard Nixon talked about a a basic income where the government would support, you know, with a, an annual stipend to allow you to at least um, survive and, and eat. Uh, I know that's counter to a lot of conservative thinking, but if you had a world where there's no work, uh, that's going to have to come someday, and they're already talking about it. So in any event, it's, it's preparing for that. And um, we, we see these uh, reports about loss of jobs um, and, you, you know, again, it's not reported in the daily news, but algorithms are replacing a professional work at a tremendous level. Wow. Yeah, that's, that's really interesting. Um, I heard a lot about that. Well, you know, last year COVID came and uh, besides the adjustment of working remotely, 
how has COVID, in your opinion, changed the way job search or employment opportunities have um, are going now? Oh, basically online. I mean, if you're not zooming, you're not uh, you're not in the game. I mean, everything is moving to video conferencing, and really, the the COVID shut down all networking, which uh, was negative. But on the other hand, Zoom allows us to connect with people outside of the area. You know, I have a monthly um, you know um, meeting executive roundtable with about seventy people, ninety percent from Southern California. But now, thanks to Zoom, I've got people in New York, Texas, uh, Toronto. Uh, I've got a person from Istanbul, Turkey next month. So the, the, the beauty of it is the fact that we can invite people from, I've got a speaker, as I said, from Toronto uh, in two months. That could have never happened before. And uh, we used to have 30 people every month. Now we got 70 to 80 and growing because of Zoom. So that's uh, a big change. And um, if you're not uh, familiar with uh, video conferencing and Zooming, you've got to get into that game uh, because that's the way jobs are found. And uh, whether you're just coming out of school or you're, um, you know, when you're 70s, uh, that's, that's the way you build your network. And then you find a way to, you meet them online or in a Zoom meeting, but then you find a way to eventually go have coffee with them. But it begins with connecting in a Zoom meeting and then knowing who's there and then following up and meeting them and trying to build a relationship. Everything comes from relationships, relationships rule. And building relationships throughout your life and career is so important. Richard Branson talks about he got into several different businesses by building his network outside of his core business. He started in music, but then, you know, the other business he's got into because he always curious reaching out beyond his, his, um, the network of the thing that he happened to be working at that time. Well, Bill, I really appreciate you telling us about Ellermeyer Connect. I've enjoyed being a part of that the last two months. And I know, Earlier tonight, you've invited James to come on and invited him to be a future guest. So that'd be fun to have him. But I want to ask you something I heard you say. You were quoted as saying, the notion of retirement shortens lives. The brain is like a muscle that atrophies if you do not constantly challenge it. That's why I live life the way I do. It's all about using your brain. Can you help the audience to understand how they could use their brain? Well, it kind of speaks for itself, but uh, to me, uh, education is a lifelong activity. If you're not learning, you're not living. So that starts with reading, um, being up to date, and reading is my passion. It's my way of relaxing. Uh, every evening, uh, you know, 9.30 for the next half hour or so, I'm reading at least two books. And, um, you know, lifelong education, uh, you know, is stimulating your, your learning curve, if you will, and, and stimulating the brain. But your, your health comes from keeping that brain active. I have a I have lot, several people my age that did the traditional retirement, and they're either not doing well or they're not with us because, again, uh, life and health and work go together. Now, you don't need to be working 50 hours a week. Maybe when you're in your 80s or 90s, you're working 20 hours a week. You're not crazy like me working 50 hours a week, but that's my choice <laughs> because I love what I do. But uh, in any event, uh, that's the, that's it. You want to keep your hand in the game. Uh, and I always tell people, as I said earlier, you never, never use that R word. You know, retirement is a, is a, is a, an old fashioned way that um, needs to be gone. Well, Bill, I'm going to go back to, you talked about this um, several times in different facets, but help, people understand uh, the three possible choices they have um, to job search or finding the work that they want. What are they? Yeah, um, you know, a lot of people always think of, uh, uh, you know, their, their career as a job. Well, it, it comes in different forms. There's a regular corporate job where you work for somebody else. But again, like we were just saying, once you get up into your mid 40s and beyond, you, you want to start thinking about other things. So when I work with a client, about 30% of my clients go after a corporate job. Maybe 10% start or buy a business. Boomers and just below have been selling businesses at a tremendous rate. So, you know, that choice, I've, I've, I've had several people buy a franchise as their base and be very successful or a small business, or they partner with private equity who puts up most of the money, they put some skin in the game and they've got partial ownership 
of a business. That's the way to get on. It has nothing to do with a corporate job. And the last thing we talked about is building a portfolio career, using your core skills over multiple streams of income. Not right for everybody, but for a good percentage of my clients, that's ultimately the way they work because a portfolio career is also a good job search method because you're meeting people in several different areas. Your base area, maybe you're an accountant or a, you know, a controller type, that's your base, but then you might be teaching a course in accounting one night a week. You might be writing um, you know, uh, articles on it. You might write a book. I mean, they're just, like I said earlier, I have two pages of things that people do to, in addition to their core uh, portfolio. Wow. You know, Bill, uh, I am so motivated just uh, listening to you uh, uh, just uh, uh, put these things out. So you, you mentioned something about uh, networking, uh, the, the group meeting that you invited me to, and I, I right. can't wait. Uh, I, I'm so right. excited now. You know, so um, what motivates you to continue that, the networking uh, meetings and, and bring other people in and educate them and let everybody change ideas? Because I'm crazy. <laughs> no, it's a lot well, of work. It's a labor of love. It started, um, you know, many years ago when I when I realized a lot of my clients weren't connected, and so to help them get connected, I thought, well, I'll just start a breakfast. And we started with I don't know five or six or ten people, but then it quickly grew way beyond that. So for the last ten years, for um, eight of those, we were meeting at a local restaurant here with that had our own room, and we had about thirty people every month. But then when the COVID came, we moved to, um, you know, the Zoom meetings. And so that expanded greatly. And uh, that's one of the advantages of Zoom. So now instead of 30, we got about 70 people every month and growing. And uh, so, uh, you know, there, there are some real advantages, some, some good things as a result of this virus. And that's one of them. So that's how it got started, really to help my clients. But then, as I say, it grew way beyond that because people are realizing you know, the, the grist for the mill, to be successful in business, you got to have a network. And uh, a lot of people meet me and they said, you know, I knew I should have, I was going to, but I didn't. And here I am 53 years old and I, I only know the people that I worked with for the last 10 years. It's a shame, but a lot of people, you know, know they should, but they didn't know how to get started or they just didn't get around to it. And then they sheepishly tell me, sorry to say, you know, here I am at 54, I have no network at all and they're out of work. So that's wow. the people I helped yeah. build up. Well, you know, I'm excited and uh, I can't wait to uh, uh, get back from this uh, commercial break, you know, because um, uh, you're motivating me. I'm mean, you motivating a lot of people that did not think they had hope. We'll be back to continue to talk to Bill. It's your life. I'm James Cooley. I know uh, I'm going to bring you in on this one at the beginning again, you know, so. Okay. Great job, Bill. Okay.
Welcome back to your show life. I'm James Cooley. And I'll tell you, Bill is, uh, is he's educating us and um, uh, the older community out there, I mean, including myself, I am excited. Now, you know, uh, my young producer there, you know, I mean, he, he got a long way to go. Uh, uh, but, but uh, you know, is he putting it down, Noah? Wow, you, you're absolutely right. You know, um, listen to the audience, uh, we still, uh, the phone lines are open, 1-888-344-1170. Again, that's 1-888-344-1170. Hey, hey, Bill, uh, how do you finish this question? My best career management advice is blank. Well, I mean, that's any book you put, <laughs> pick up on job search or career management, I'm gonna tell you the key is uh, relationship building and, and lifelong networking. And uh, obviously, that's something that uh, every job seeker has to do. A lot of people want to study it. They want to get the perfect resume. They want to practice interviewing and all that stuff. The bottom line is you need to be meeting people. You start with friends and family uh, that are people are easy. And then you work your way up. And then you now you get online and you meet people. You read. You follow up with people that have written articles. You're constantly building your network. If you're not meeting two or three people a day, you're not doing your job. And that isn't just when you're in job search. That's a lifelong activity, as I, I quoted, uh, you know, Branson here earlier. So that's important. That is, the, that is the key, building relationships throughout your career. Bill, you mentioned that you just love to read every night. Um, do you have any books that motivate you and inspire you? So do you have like a reading list or things you can suggest? <laughs> yeah, I won't go through the list because it's too long, but I got a great book and here it is called Give and Take, Give and Take by Adam Grant. This book is about uh, helping others drive success through giving to others. It has a lot of examples of people up in Silicon Valley who gave with no thought of getting anything in return and they became famous and they become actually wealthy by helping and serving others. So networking is about learning how to serve the other people. And even if you don't have a job, you can always ask questions. If you ask questions, then you can give them something. What could you give? An article, a book, a seminar, a webinar, a person, any of those things. That means you. the other person says, oh, uh, this person cares about me. And then you have the chance to build a network. So this is a, again, it's a lifelong activity and helping others is a way to drive your own success. Thanks, Bill. That's great. You know, maybe off off the air sometime, you can send us your list of books so that we can <laughs> let people know and we can make sure we can see how many of them we can check off. Okay. It's too That'd long. It's too long. Yeah, I'm a off futurist. The air. So here's another one. And the book is called 2030, How Today's Biggest Trends Will Collide and Reshape the Future of Everything. And I'm talking about the next few years. Again, the book is 2030 by Mauro Gillen, G-U-I-L-L-E-N, probably pronounced Gillen. But my point is the book, very simple, 2030, how today's biggest trends will collide and reshape the future of everything. And that's happening daily. Bill, other than reading, which is so important to you, how do you continue to reinvent yourself? Uh, uh, well, of course, the, the core is learning and reading, but I reinvent by, by my clients teach me a lot. And, and I'm curious. I'm a, I'm a hit nut for history. I'm a big reader on history, and that allows me to reinvent by looking at what other people have done. I love music. Music is what drives me. My dad, before he got married, you know, had to, he was a, a band leader. And then when he had um, he got married and had me, he had to get a real job. But my point is, <laughs> I grew up on big band music. And then I got into music and then rock and blues. I had a radio show back in the 60s called House of the Blues. I played from Bessie Smith to Ray Charles. So I'm a big blues guy. And, uh, you know, that's a dimension and an element uh, that I don't mention all the time. But I've learned to kind of share these kind of things with people because it's a connection. And it leads to other little stories that are sticky, memorable. If you just talk facts, people don't remember them. But if you share who you are and what you do, like my military experience. I didn't used to share it because 
it wasn't popular back in the 70s and 80s. But now people thank me for my service. Well, that was so long ago, I don't even remember it. But the point is, I share it. <laughs> so the fact is, it's in now. So and uh, happily so, because my my naval experience was uh, was terrific, and uh, and I really uh, lear learned a lot. And that's who I am today as a part of that. Yeah, Bill. Uh, for uh, the listening audience, or some of them that that's out there that had completely lost hope until uh, they heard this interview tonight. What other word or uh, uh, wisdom or advice or inspiration would you share with them? You know, the way I would look at it at this, everybody you meet, whether you're out of work, coming out of school, or just beginning, or you're late, everybody you meet is troubled by something in life. Nobody has it perfect. The millionaire person might be suffering from some family issue that you don't know his pain. So everybody you meet, just know they're just a human being like everybody else. They have, um, they have issues and they have problems too. So at some level, everybody has some challenge or some, something that's troubling them. I and just know that. That means you're just as powerful as they are in terms of learning and living. So take that forward when you meet somebody, even though that this person might be very, very much more experienced than you, even if, if you're coming out of school, um, you can learn to ask questions. And as I said earlier, do that networking by asking questions and, and, and give them something. You can always give something. And I just illustrated that. Yeah. Well, Bill, I have, I want to ask you something that I know you're famous for saying too. You say to people, connect, communicate, relate, and collaborate. Tell us, what does that mean? Well, obviously it begins with the networking and the connecting, but then relating means you've got to know who this person is. You have to take an interest in that other person, you know? So obviously uh, the, the uh, relating to that other person and taking an interest then will allow you the possibility of doing something together, collaborating. And that's what I teach in my, my executive roundtables is the first thing is to do is to connect with people, communicate, about the back and forth that I'm talking about, relating to it and understanding it. And then if you do those three things, then you have the possibility of collaborating. Many businesses and many um, successes have come out over the last 10 years of people that have come to my round table. My round table is all personally curated. I handpick people who, who are high achievement people, but key, know how to give back. And I have some of my friends are in their 30s, millennials, my daughter is 36 and she has a PR firm. So I learned from, from her, I have an interest in the people in that age group. And then I have people up into their nineties that are still working. So I go up and down between. I don't just stay in one groove, if you know what I mean. Hey, Bill, you know, I, I, I like your three C's. Uh, I, I got my saying, you know, when I'm, you know, I'm a speaker, motivation speaker, this and that. And I have what we call the four C's and they are create, collaborate, commit with confidence you know so uh, there you go man so, there you go we're on the same page <laughs> oh man oh yeah we are, we're certainly on the same page hey bill i know that you gave out uh, your information uh can we come into the end of the show can you tell our listening audience again how they can get in touch with you yeah i'm uh, I, like i said i don't mind being called or text me 714-803-9805 that's 714-803-9805 my email bill at Ellermeyer Connect altogether.com. Bill at Ellermeyer, my last name, at connect.com. That's it. Those are the two places. You can Google my name and go to website, or there's a couple things on YouTube. Uh, some of my break of uh, my 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 old school breakfasts that we had a few years ago are still still on there. So uh, check it out. Hey Bill, this has been an absolute pleasure. And you know, I, I really appreciate you taking the time to come on the show. Thank you so much, my friend. Thank you so much. Uh, you know, I want to thank uh, my co-host, Michelle Cooley. I want to thank the show uh, contributor, Chuck Trinoni. I want to thank our listening audience, you know, for taking the time to listen. And, uh, you know, um, we are always out there looking for a sponsorship so we can continue to bring this great message to you. So, um, and also one of the things, the JC Cooley Foundation, you know, it's, come, it's, it's fundraising time because we want to give away some scholarships to uh, our, our high school seniors this year. Uh, we want to make sure that uh, 
We take care of them. So listen to the audience. We'll be back tomorrow. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. It's your life. I am James Cooley, and we will see you tomorrow. Thanks, James. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> hey, thank you so much. <laughs> Absolutely, absolutely. Uh, Bill, thank you so much. Chuck, Michelle. We blew that time away. It just went too fast. I did. It, it, I mean, when you're having fun, it, it's, it's like that, Bill. That you know, so. Uh, hey, you and, can uh, have me on next year. Or at the hey, end you of know, year. I, I, I got to bring you back. I, I got to bring yeah. you back. Please you know, bring so, me uh, back. Love it. Love it. I could have done that for another hour. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah, so. I, I, I tell you what, uh, you guys hold on one second. Hey, hey, hey Noah, I I'll see you tomorrow, my friend. All right. Okay. Hey, we can uh, turn up the Zoom if you got light for a second. I'll, so. I'll back up the Zoom. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah, yeah. No, you did Zoom. A... Can, can I turn off the phone? Yeah, yeah, yeah you, you can turn, turn the phone off. Okay. No, you did a great job. Hey, fantastic, fantastic job. And Michelle was awesome in, in yeah. telling me yeah. tell all about my background. I'd been so long ago, I didn't remember it, but she, <laughs> she covered it. Hey, I can hear you. I can hear you. Oh, yeah. better job okay. than I could. She, Thank you. She, she'll send it back to you. She'll send it back to you in an email so you can remember it again, okay? <laughs> <laughs> a better job than I could, you know? So that was, that was great. Hey, uh, what day is your meeting next, next, next month, month Bill? It's always the last Wednesday, which this month is the very last day, the 31st. I'll let him know. I'll let you know afterwards, JC. Okay. okay. Yeah, you get the invite the, uh, probably uh, the end of next week. Okay. okay. Yeah, so, uh, 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 yeah, I really appreciate it. Bill, thank it you. It come from me. It comes from my, my, the, my partner, Nalinia uh, Varenas. She's a uh, website designer, SEO search engine. She comes from the Philippines, but been here many years. Um, you know, and she handles all the technology of my Zoom calls and all that. So uh, she's terrific. And, uh, you know, she will be sending the evite to you. Hey, I, I look forward to it. I mean, I look forward to it. You know, so, hey, but Bill, seriously, I want to get you back on uh, again real soon. It's, it's always nice to, you know, you know educate the, the, our public, especially uh, the older community like myself. myself. That's, that's still out there, and so, sometimes we don't know where we go. And well, this was so fantastic. Maybe we can talk about some other things like music. I used to go and see Chuck Berry sit in with Ike Turner in St. Louis back in the fifties. So wow. you know, I, I'm a, I'm a, as I said, I'm a blues man, and um, you know, I used to see Ike Turner at the at the Imperial Club in St. Louis back in the uh, late fifties, and uh, so. Uh, I've always had an interest in uh, music, starting with my dad. So we can always talk about that. It's one of my favorite subjects. Hey, man, I look forward to talking about, talk about anything you want to talk about, about Bill. <laughs> Bill, do you ever listen to K-Jazz on Sundays, nothing but the blues? All the time. Yeah, that's a great. I love that station. Yeah, I listen to it er early in the morning with the, you know, the big band music. and. Yeah, I love it, too, on Sundays. Yeah. I love big band music. What station is it on? Or is it XM Radio? 88.1. 88.1. And then you can live stream it too on through iHeart. Okay. Yeah. 88.1. And it's they got different genres. And yeah. uh, he's right on Sunday mornings, you'll hear all the big bands, and then they'll do a Sinatra hour. Right. And they, they just do it right on up. It's really cool. Right. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I'm going to have to end this, but. Uh, Thank you guys so much. Thank, Thank you so much. much. Thanks. 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 Been a great Thank pleasure. Thanks, Thank Bill. We'll be in touch, okay? Thank you so much. All, All right, right, man. See you.